Okay, so in lectures we've been looking at vector calculus, we've been um, working with the basic operations of vector calculus, divergence, div, the curl. This um, lesson is just a little introduction or reminder for, for the students in front of me of the divergence, its calculation, and its interpretation. Okay, so um, one of the motivations for studying the divergence is that it's, it's a basic concept, like a, a loosely speaking, a basic derivative, a basic derivative from vector calculus. And um, the divergence, in a nutshell, measures expansion or compression of a vector field, the spread, it, gives, it, it measures the spread of the vector field, okay? Um, I've given two questions, or two examples here that we're going to work through. One's sort of computational, pretty easy. The second one is more visual, to give you a visual um, understanding of the divergence. So, in the first case, now, here I've written it as an ordered triple. I might just sort of write that out as IJK just so you know what my notation is here. So we're asked to compute the divergence of F at the point 1, 2, 3. Now, this sort of notation, you can also write it as div F. But the nice sort of triangle, the nabla dotted with F, gives you a, a, a reminder of how you compute it. This nabla, remember, is just a symbolic vector. Okay, so you can think of this as the following. Okay, so in this context, this, this del operator, this, this um, triangle type operator, is going to operate on the vector field F via a dot product. Okay. So let's compute it. By definition, the divergence is just the following. So here I'm just going to write these as ordered triples because it saves me a bit of space. Okay, and when we expand that, that sort of scalar product or the dot product, we're not multiplying, remember, the DDXs, DDYs, DDZs are operating, they're acting on those functions in the other, um, uh, on the right hand side. So, you know, it'll be that operating with the first uh, component function, that operating with the second component function, that operating with the third component function. So you just do that and add them all together. Okay, so now it's just a matter of partially differentiating. So ddx of this is going to be something like 2x because we hold all everything fixed except for the x's and differentiate. Here it's going to be 1, and over here it's going to be something like 2x, uh, 2z. Sorry. So at our point of interest, let's calculate the value of this. So let's call the point 1, 2, 3, say, p. So I just replace x with 1, y with 2, and z with 3. So I'm going to get 2 plus 1 plus 6 equals 9. If you want to sort of make it obvious that, that we're evaluating this at a point, then you can have it here, this little vertical line. Now, notice that when we calculated the divergence, we got 2x plus 1 plus 2z. Not a vector. Not a vector. We started with a vector. The divergence gives us a scalar, a real valued 
um, function. Okay, and then we evaluate that function at a point. It gives us a number, not a vector. Okay, so what does it mean though? What, we, we've produced something, but what does it mean? Well, that vector field at the point P would be trying to spread away from, um, from the point P. Okay, so you can think of point P as being like a, a source, a source point. Um, if this was negative, then the vector field would try to sort of move towards or, or um, um, uh, yeah, move towards the point P. So you would have to speak of a sink then, P being a sink. Essentially, if I drew a little sphere around the point P and then draw in the vector field, the vector field would want to be sort of jumping out of that, of that, um, that sphere. Okay, so that's part A. Let's do part B. In part B, we're given a vector field, but only in the plane. We're asked to compute the divergence and sketch G and show that there's a net, a zero net outflow over each rectangle in the plane. So, so just to, it'll be 0i plus xj in ijk form. All right, so by definition, the divergence of g, just working in the plane here, so I don't need to worry about the d, d, z's. So ddx of 0, 0, ddy of x is 0. But now let's give it some geometric understanding. What I'm going to do is draw in a little rectangle and draw sort of some of the vectors associated with this vector field, just in the plane, just a basic um, picture here. So. I'm just going to draw a rectangle centered at the origin. Now, what I would like to do is draw in some vectors associated with my vector field G and have a look at the flow over the boundary of that sort of rectangular region. So, our, our vector field G is X times the J vector. So, would we expect our vectors to point up or sort of horizontally? Vertically or horizontally? Vertically, right? Because we're just multiplying the j vector by some value x. So, as x gets large and positive, this vector is going to increase. Okay, so when x is small, this is going to have small magnitude. When x is positive, it's going to be pointing up. So, these aren't drawn to scale because I can't fit them all on the page. But say along there, you would get these kind of vectors. Now if x is negative and small, and then we sort of keep getting a bit bigger, we'll get something like that. Now the same along the bottom edge. x hasn't changed here, so I can just sort of copy what I've got up there. Uh, sorry, um, yeah. Oh, oh. Okay, these are these are not very well drawn. But the idea is to get you just to give some indication of of what um, what's going on with the vector field. Okay, so probably if you wanted to be a little bit careful, you'd make this vector a little bit shorter. Okay, about the same length as that. Okay, so let's analyze the flow over the edges. Now, you can see that, you know, as long as you draw your picture a little carefully, that outflow looks like it's going to cancel with that inflow. And that inflow looks like it's going to cancel with that outflow. Okay, can, can everyone see that? Yep, good. So, 
there's a zero net outflow. So let's say the vector, you've got a, a, a velocity of a, a field of a fluid. The net outflow would be zero in this case. Okay, so, so observe the inflow and outflow cancel, if you like. And so there is a zero net outflow. So that's not a full justification because what the question's asked you is to show that there's a zero net outflow over each rectangle. Here I've only drawn one, but if you move that rectangle around, the same principle applies. Okay? The same principle applies. Okay? So if you just said there was only inflow. If there, okay, good question. Let, let's say there was only inflow would we ex into our rectangle. Would we expect the divergence to be positive or negative? Negative, right? And if there was only if there was a net outflow, you would expect the divergence to be positive. Because there'd be a positive, there'd be a, a, a spread, ten, a tendency to spread away from all points inside that that rectangle. Okay, so let's look at the bigger picture. Now, the divergence of a vector field measures um, the spread of the vector field or a net outflow over each closed. Um, curve or surface containing the point of interest. If the divergence is positive everywhere, then there's net outflow over every closed surface or curve. If the divergence is negative, or the, the, the opposite is true, there's a net inflow over every closed curve or surface, for example, in, in every closed curve in the plane. If the vector field has zero divergence everywhere, then we call the vector field incompressible. And there's neither a net outflow nor a net inflow. Uh, there's just zero. So here's a couple of examples that I've left you to do. In part two, I've asked you to, to just draw a circle rather than um, a rectangle or a square. Um, that's got to do with the, and you'll see why when you do the question. Okay, sketch the vector field, xi plus yj, and you'll actually see that maybe a circle is a bit easier to work with than a, uh, well, well, not necessarily, it's just, just a bit, bit neater. <laughs>